my brothers, since the very beginning of time, since the very beginning of the creation of man, we have been at war. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in multiple places in the Quran, He reminds the human being, Shaitan, Iblis is your enemy, so therefore take him as an enemy. So severe is this animosity of Shaitan with the human being. You know, ever watch the child come into this world? The first thing he does is he cries. And there is a narration that says that is because Shaitan waits for the baby to be born. And then he pricks him, he stabs him until he makes him cry. And he says to him, you and I, we are enemies. So imagine the moment that I came out of my mother, Shaitan was waiting there to declare his war with me and remind me that I am your enemy until the very last moment of your life. Guess who will also be there waiting? The same enemy, Abdullah ibn al-Imam Ahmad radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. He says, I was there when my father was dying. And he says, and he was laying there on the bed and he was going through these, what they call sakarat al-mawt, the last moments of life. You know, he's in and out of consciousness. He says, and as my father gained consciousness, he says, la ba'd, la ba'd, no, not yet, no, not yet. So Abdullah says, I was curious, but why is my father saying no, not yet? Is he afraid of death? He says, and then my father, he lost consciousness. He says, so I waited there and I was anxious and I was worried. He said, until I waited, until my father, he gained consciousness again. And therefore I asked him, I said to my father, why were you saying no, not yet? Don't you want to die? And then Imam Ahmad, he says to his son, Abdullah, he says to him, no, my son, I did not say no, not yet, because I didn't want to die. I said, no, not yet, because shaitan was standing in front of me and he was biting on his fingernails and he was telling me, oh, Ahmad, you have slip out of my hands. Ahmed, you've slipped out of my hands. So therefore I replied and I said to him, no, not yet. Not until I'm dead and gone is the war over between you and I. So if from the very moment I was born, shaitan is there. And at the very last moment of my life, shaitan is there. And he's there and his oath and his promise to Allah is to show that I will be ungrateful. To try and distract me and take me away from Allah Azza wa Jal. And one of the biggest tricks of shaitan is to belittle any good that you do. Unfortunately, even within ourselves as Muslims, we tend to look down upon. And this is actually from shaitan. Is that it? Is that all you did? Is that all you gave? Is that all you could do? This is from shaitan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says in the authentic hadith, never belittle any act of good. Don't let shaitan fool you and convince you that is that it. No, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is never belittle any act of good. If there's any good that you can do, no matter what it is, do it. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Imagine Allah Azza wa Jal says, anyone who does an atom's weight of good. What is an atom? How insignificant is an atom to any human being? Something you can't even see with your own eyes. But Allah Azza wa Jal says, anyone who does an atom's weight of good, he shall verily see it on the day of resurrection. So my brothers and sisters, take every single opportunity that you can. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, even meeting your brother with a cheerful face, meeting someone with a smile on your face, that's a sadaqah, that's an act of charity. That's a means that Allah Azza wa Jal can reward you with good. Wallahi, it doesn't have to be dramatic. Sometimes we think that, look, if I can't give $10,000 in charity, well, therefore I shouldn't give any charity whatsoever. How do you know by Allah that one good deed could be the difference between Jannah and Jahannam? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that Allah loves the small action that's consistent. Allah loves this more than the large action, but it was a one-off. That consistency, even if it's small, Allah Azza wa Jal, he loves it. Any act of good, do it. Don't waste time. Wallah, my brothers, this is shaitan at his absolute best when he makes you feel insignificant. That whatever good you are going to do, that really in the scheme of things, what's it going to really change? No, is it good? Yes, then do it. Don't worry about how and where and why and really is it going to change anything. That's Allah's job. Your job and my job is that if Allah presents me with a situation, with an opportunity where I can contribute something, contribute something. Imagine the Prophet Sallallahu in the authentic hadith, he says there was a man running in Jannah. A man was running and he was enjoying his paradise. And guess what made him enter? He saw that a branch from a tree was coming out and that it was in the way of the Muslims. It was in the way of the walkway. 
So the man decided, he said to himself, I can see that this branch has become an inconvenience. It's become a nuisance for the Muslims. So I shall remove it to make things easier for the Muslims. That was the very action that made this man run around in his Jannah and enjoy his Jannah. From what, what did he do? Wallah, in the scheme of things, he removed a branch. The Prophet wasallam he says, the good and the bad deeds of my ummah was presented to me. He said, and I found that removing a harmful object from the road was put in their good deeds. Something as little as this. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the authentic narration, you know, he calls upon the Muslim women and he says, O oh Muslim women, don't belittle any act of good, even if it's giving your neighbor the hoof. And imagine the foot of an animal. What value does that have? But to give that as a gift to your neighbor is an act of good. And this is Islam, that a believer should be the one who does good wherever he is, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the vibe. If you see an opportunity to do good, jump on it, because by Allah, you don't know what may come out of this. Think of it as a seed that you planted into the earth. You don't know what's going to come out of it. We do what we do for Allah's pleasure and then we see whatever Allah wants to do with it. An atom's weight, an atom's weight, you shall see its reward on the Day of Judgment. You know, one of the names of the Day of Judgment is called the Day of Regret. Why? Because it is on that day we will then realize the weight, the amount, the scale, the proportion of things that we deemed as insignificant. To say Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Words, words that are, they're very light on the tongue. But you look at your life and you think, man, I'm a sinner. I have this haram and that haram. And I haven't been to the masjid in I don't know how long. I'm in so much darkness. What's a word going to do for me? Imagine a tree in paradise because of a Subhanallah tree. In the famous hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, there are two words, they're very light, very light on the tongue, meaning that they flow, they flow off the tongue easily, but they're heavy, they're mighty, they have so much weight in the scales of Allah Azza wa Jal. They're so heavy. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -Azim. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -Azim. Ways of doing good. Wallah, don't belittle any opportunity. Sometimes you think I'm such a sinner, what good can I possibly do? A story was narrated that a woman from Banu Israel who was a prostitute, imagine this was the woman's occupation, one of the worst of sins, things that are unimaginable. This was her job, that a prostitute was walking and that she seen a dog that was thirsty. Again, now this is shaitan. This is how shaitan works. In the scheme of things, really, what is she going to do? And look, subhanAllah, from a Muslim's perspective, it's a dog, a dog that is najis. It's not like, wallah, it was a beautiful, colorful parrot that touched her heart. No, 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 it was a stray dog, no owner. But this woman, she was able to get to the well, water well, and drink, and that she seen the thirst in the eyes of this dog, and that this dog couldn't get to it. So something moved her in her heart. So she did an act of good. She brought some water to the thirsty dog and she allowed the dog to drink. The Prophet ﷺ says that Allah Azza entered her into paradise because of this one good deed that she did. And this is Islam. Don't belittle any act of good. Any opportunity you get, jump on it. And inshallah, I will end with this one hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he's describing the day of judgment, the hardest day in all of our lives. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, every one of you will stand in front of Allah and speak to Allah directly. And there shall be no interpreter between you and Allah. And then you would look to your right and all that you will see is the deeds that you did. And then you will look to your left and all you will see are the deeds that you brought forward. And then you will look in front of you and you shall see Jahannam, the fire of hell burning in front of you. You think, Allahu Akbar, how can I save myself from this? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, so save yourself from Jahannam, even if it's by giving half a date in charity. Half a date. Imagine now I'm standing, I'm going to be speaking to Allah. I've got Jahannam in front of me. I've got my deeds to my right and to my left. And people are scared and people are petrified. And this is the scariest day of my life. And this is the moment of no return. And now the Prophet is advising me. See how Shaitan is telling you, brother, if it's not Hajj, if it's not a million dollars in charity, if you're not going to give up a limb, you know, in, in, no, 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 this is Shaitan. Belittling anything that you do. Is that it? Is that all you could do? Is that all you could say? Is that all that you could give? No, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, 
save yourself from this calamity, from this musibah, even if by you giving half a date in charity. This is Islam, that any good that you do, you will find it on the Day of Judgment. And today you are alive, golden opportunity to make the most of it. Don't waste your time. Any goodness, Allah, any amal khair, anything, no matter how insignificant it seems to you, it brings the pleasure of Allah.